Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today I just want to show you how to do this liquid nitrogen slash water freezing effect. It basically consists of the liquid simulation hardening into ice and then I added this heavy smoke sort of dry ice smoke simulation on top. So I'll show you how to do that. If you're new here, welcome. Uh, you might not be aware that all of the project files for all of my tutorials are available for free download on Gumroad. So if you go under the video un into the description here, it says free project file, it'll take you to Gumroad and you can basically just put in the price as zero. It says zero plus, but you can just put in zero and download it for free. You know, everything is here, the smoke, blood, water effects. Um, so I just wasn't sure if all of you guys were aware, um, but all of the project files, including this one, are available for free. And if you're new here, again, welcome. My name's Jesse. I'm a visual effects artist based in Los Angeles. And I've been making a lot of these tutorials, which you can check out on the channel. And I would appreciate it if you would subscribe. So let's look at this one more time. So again, basically, we just have the first part of it, which is the liquid. And it's actually exactly the same as the lava tutorial. So I'm actually going to direct you first for the first part of this tutorial to follow the lava tutorial. So you would just go, you know, on my channel and I'll link this into the description and just watch the hardening lava tutorial and get that setup done first. Because basically all I did was I changed the hardened lava material into ice and I changed the molten lava into water. So basically initially I was just working on this dry ice tutorial but I thought that it was kind of lame so I decided to combine it with the lava tutorial to get um, basically this um, hardening water effect so basically after you followed the lava tutorial you should have something like this where you have you know hot lava up here and a black hardened lava on the bottom and then you would just go into the material setup and instead of the hot lava, you would just change the material to water. So you would do diffuse pure black, reflection 100% white, refraction 100% white, and IOR 1.3. So that will give you this clear water on top. And then for the hardened lava, you would just change that to the ice material. So what I did was I went to the V-Ray materials.de. I'm going to link to this in the description and you want to download this ice by JV material. And then after you download that, you would just go under this little arrow in your material editor, go open material library, and then locate the material in your computer and you will get this new little line here where it says ice by JV, you can double click and now that material is in your material editor and you can just drag that into this um, what was initially the hardened lava material and then what you'll end up with is just the water is turning basically into ice so if you were to render it out i made a separate pass you would basically get this so it's just the water hardening into ice with no smoke so before we combine these effects together the liquid and the smoke i want to show you how to do this dry ice smoke separately so basically I have this super simple scene with just a martini glass. Again, the final result of that looked something like this. So we just have this nice sort of slow heavy smoke falling down. So basically just make sure that you're working under customized units, centimeters, and one unit is one centimeter. And then if I were to just set it up on the side here, basically I just imported the glass and then I would go under Phoenix, fire and smoke sim just drag out a regular sim and then go under helpers phoenix phx source make a regular source and then i would go under standard box and just make a box and you know this is going to be the mission of your dry ice smoke so i would put it somewhere here and add that as my emitter and then you can right click go to object properties make it not renderable right click Phoenix FD properties make it not a solid object. I'm going fast just because we've done this many times. So I'm going to assume that you guys know how to do this. If you are new and you are confused, then be sure to watch some of my older tutorials to get up to speed. 
but basically this is the initial super basic setup so I'm just gonna delete that and go back to the settings here so for the actual source I'm just doing 11.5 centimeters outgoing velocity temperature is 300 and 300 is basically neutral temperature it doesn't go up or down um, so basically I'm just controlling the heaviness of the smoke with the buoyancy parameter so you can actually uncheck that we don't even need temperature and then for smoke I'm just doing one and everything else stays the same here and then for the actual grid settings I did 0.3 centimeter cell size you know as always you can do jammed on minus z so that the ground acts as a ground you can do smoke buoyancy minus one which will make the smoke basically fall down like this and then we don't want any vorticity whatsoever we basically want the smoke to maintain this very small scale you know these tiny little plumes sort of look so you don't want any vorticity and I did quality 50 and I could do more you could do 100 here which will just make um, the smoke last longer and will give you some nicer swirls and some nicer detail uh, steps per frame can stay one so this is really just a super simple setup obviously under rendering volumetric options you can just display with the opacity under simple smoke opacity and the smoke color you just want to do almost pure white I don't usually make things completely pure white because then it's easy for them to get blown out once you add some lights. Um, but that's basically the setup for the dry eyes. So then what I did was I just opened my lava scene, which would look something like this, and I imported in that second grid. So I'm just going to unhide it. Um, so again, this would be the lava grid and the bigger one would be the smoke grid. And the reason it's so big is like this, this pink line was the original and it expanded all the way here because I went under grid and then I said adaptive grid by smoke and then you can set this maximum expansion and you can play with how far is the smoke allowed to expand outside of the original borders. So I had my camera here, so I knew that I didn't want the smoke to be hitting an imaginary wall in front of the camera. So I would basically let the smoke expand on the x-axis all the way back here, so that if I put my camera here, um, the smoke will not be clipped. So that's something that you can play with here, so the maximum expansion, I don't think we covered that before. So really this is a super simple setup, don't be intimidated by this, you have your particle mapper here which is from the lava setup you have your liquid setup for the lava and then you have your smoke emitter for the for the heavy smoke so really everything is controlled just by these three little helpers and then you know if you imagine that you still have your martini glass here so if this is your martini glass um, then you would just go under your phoenix smoke source you would delete the glass and you would just add the phoenix fd liquid so you would just go add and add the lava liquid grid and just say phoenix fd liquid say okay and then you would just go under the smoke um, grid and hit simulation start and when you hit start it might give you a warning saying that using another phoenix simulation as a source might not work properly it's really just a disclaimer sort of warning but it will it will work fine basically the smoke will be emitted from the liquid the last remaining thing that we have to cover is the rendering so basically I tried rendering everything together and it was taking forever and I think it's because you have this water here and then you mix the water with the smoke and the smoke being reflected and refracted in the water is just taking forever so what I ended up doing was I just rendered it in two passes so this was just the smoke pass like this and you can see that you know everything that's not the smoke is just occluded and then I have the separate ice pass here and I just combine them together in After Effects so basically what you would do you would just hide the smoke sim you know set your camera right get the water and ice material looking good so you can hit Control c to make a camera and then if you want to be sure that it doesn't move you can go under hierarchy link info and you have locks and you can lock the camera on x y and z so you know that you won't move it between the two passes and then just render out the ice pass like this and now basically what you want to do is you want to select the liquid and you want to select your object which would be the bust for me here 
and you want to go under V-Ray properties and say mat object, mat for reflection, alpha contribution minus one, and then say effect alpha as checked. So this way when you render it, basically it will just occlude those objects and um, render just the smoke. And if for whatever reason it's not really working, what you can do to make sure that it'll work is just create a V-Ray material mapper material say discard old material and then you can say matte surface and then shadows checked effect alpha checked set this to minus one and apply this material mapper material to your object and this will just ensure that it will in fact not render and not affect the alpha so that what you should get is really just the smoke itself and everything else is transparency so that when you bring it into After Effects, basically you will start with your ice pass on the bottom and then you can just add the smoke on top like this. And uh, one thing that I didn't do right is that it doesn't have enough opacity. So I just copied it over a few times just to give it more opacity. But you know, you have the opportunity to do this better than me. So you would just go under rendering volumetric options smoke opacity and raise the opacity for the dry ice smoke and also i think that the smoke buoyancy is set to be a little too low it's a little too heavy you can see that the smoke is falling really fast and even on the ground it's sort of spreading out a little too fast i would like it to have more of that smoky look so i would just go under the dynamic settings here and maybe change the buoyancy back to minus one. I changed it to minus 2.5 um, just because I was going for something more dramatic, but I would actually leave this at minus one um, to get some nicer smoke interaction with, with the objects and everything else. But this is completely up to you. Feel free to play with this however you want. So once again, this is the final effect. I hope that you guys found this tutorial helpful. If you did, as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget that you can download the free project file if you're struggling with set setting this up. You can just look at my settings. Um, as always, I would appreciate if you would subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and I'll talk to you later.